change where your default stop point is. Okay. You want it to stay up, you have to lock it. And exactly. she just unlocked lock it, it so, mm -hmm. yeah, so now it's down because she unlocked it. This pedal has nothing to do with this. This is just right. up and down at that. Okay. So we're using these two in And that locks it the up or down. That's all. All right. Now we get the fun of the three position pedal. But we'll talk more about that here. <laughs> do we get switches? Yes, we do. Hooray. Now, you still will want to find that clutch point. Bring your thread uptake lever back to the upright position. And then lift up your foot pedal and draw out your fabric. As you move it. There's no little razor blade on the back for cutting thread. For this machine, no. There's a place to install one, but for some reason it's not that, so we don't have one. All right, uh, who's up first for top threading? I'll go. Okay. Maybe. Now, this guy's a little bit weird. We're going to go back to front through this hole, floss between the two tension discs, and then front to back through the same hole we just came out of. The trick here is you want to make sure you don't cross your threads. If they end up crossing, you're going to get a lot of friction and you might end up uh, chafing or possibly even breaking your thread. And I need a bobbin. Same style bobbin, doing size. So, yeah. We're going to go from the inside of the bobbin to the outside, as always. Pop the bobbin onto the front of the machine. Excess is coming out the front. And then we're going to drop this lever down. This is doing the, basically the same thing as the, the single stitch did, but you can't see it because it's hidden inside. We've got the whole drive wheel mechanism uh, run with a tension belt. Uh, and all we're doing when we're moving this lever down is engaging a second wheel against that belt so that as we are doing our sewing, the bobbin's also going to turn. This is what's known as a continuous bobbin. Are you familiar with those from previous experience? No. Okay. So most sewing machines, when you go to fill the bobbin, you disengage the needle. Right. This one, you cannot disengage the needle. Okay. It's always active. So you're filling the bobbin as you're stitching. So I'm going to scoot you over to the front of the machine, if you don't mind. So, watch your toes. <laughs> do you, when you say that you're filling the bobbin as you're stitching, do you mean that you're stitching with one bobbin and then filling a second one at the same uh -huh. time? That's the continuous part. You never actually have to stop what you're doing in order to fill the bobbin. When you right. run out of bobbin thread, you should have another one already queued up. You slap it in, put the empty one in the front, keep going. Oh, that's what it means. I thought mm -hmm. it meant somehow it was feeding the bottom one. You'd never have to switch them out. I wish. Yeah, be nice. I wish. Now okay. you're just going to do burnouts again? I'm going to invent that then. There you go. So now is the fun and you part. you can make it here. You get to pull out on the front, just enough to keep this thread out of the way. Put the fabric installed. And steer. Well, you're getting enough revolutions around the bobbin here to hold the thread in place. Now, that machine, it didn't take very long. But with the upholstery thread, it's really slippery. So you're probably going to want a fair number of revolutions on the inside there before you stop and trim your thread. And you do still want to trim as close as you can get it. You need enough revolutions on the inside that that end is securely bound, otherwise the whole thing's going to split apart. All right, then you just keep stitching. Assuming you were actually doing something, this is fantastic. We're just going to do more donuts in the parking lot. You play with the lever. Feel free to play with the stitch length. When your bobbin is full, it's automatically going to shut off. There we go. And it just sits there while you finish up your stitching when you run out of thread on your current bobbin. All you need to do is just pop it out and trade places. Slap in the full one, put the empty one on the front of the machine here and fill it up. Which I love. It usually makes way more sense than what we're doing today. How many zillions of types of bobbins are there if I was to want to use this machine? Just bring zillions. that one into the store and say yeah. I need it. Yeah, or um, give them the model number. Okay. All right, to install the bobbin, this is going to be almost identical to what we saw on the straight stitch. I'm going to come back over to our side, and you guys come over to this side. Mm -hmm. Is the model number in this handbook then? Uh, no, actually, I don't think it is. I think I've been asked that before. We're currently in a major handout revision. This one hasn't come. Okay. okay. But it's the DNU1501S. So 
for the bobbin housing, um, same thing, you're going to lift up on that locking lever to pop the bobbin out. Does this look similar to the bobbin housing on your machine? Yeah. Okay. That's um, a little thing to eat up the floor. Yeah, so as long as the lever is locked all the way up, your bobbin is locked in place, and you let go of the lever, the bobbin can come out. Although in this machine, it is a little bit stiff. So to install, let's go ahead and move over the black one. Hold the bobbin housing face up in your hand. We're still going to be winding clockwise. So this is identical to the other machine. Bring the thread through this small slot and around under the pressure plate. And when you tug on it, the bobbin should spin clockwise. Now the only difference you'll see here is when you go to install it on the straight stitch, this lever was horizontal. Right. On the walking foot, it's tipped slightly down towards the front. Mm -hmm. But you're still trying to match up this tongue you see on the bobbin housing with the groove you'll see under the machine. So that part is still perfectly logical. On this machine, I still have to look just because there are a lot of things kind of getting in the way down there. Oops. I got my thread trapped in where it wasn't supposed to go. Oops, indeed. I usually leave the thread hanging out the back because it keeps it out of the way. What I just did is I caught the thread like that. Uh huh. Not well. Alright, to draw up your bobbin thread, you're going to hold on to your top thread. This is going to be the same as for the other machines. Find that clutch position and go one complete revolution with the hand wheel, bringing the thread up, take over from the top, back up to the top. The thread, you're pulling it towards the front of the machine. Can it, is it supposed to be pulled? Uh, uh, if any direction is fine. Any direction. I'm just okay. sitting over on this side, so okay. this is what's happening. Then give a tug on your top thread, keep it tensioned, and sweep underneath. Here's your hand. Any questions from that? That was not here for them, so. Okay. Pop and winding hands on then. You get a choice of green or black. I'll get another pop and out. Who's up first? Oh, okay. Alright, so we're just doing the bottom winding thing? Pop and winding and installation, yeah. Leather, you're going to need to make an adjustment to the height of the presser foot. Also, if somebody else has made that adjustment and not put it back, if your fabric is not moving smoothly through the machine, the presser foot may be too high and you need to lower it down. So to do that, you will just undo this set screw here, make whatever adjustment you need to, and you can go several turns before you notice. Yeah, I can't feel anything moving. Yeah, and then lock it down. It's a pretty subtle adjustment. You're not going to see a huge change in elevation, but it can make a big difference to the quality of your work. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot to mention the thread going there. <laughs> it's optional, of course. Uh, any questions on stitch length and reverse? Okay. We haven't demonstrated the longest and shortest stitches yet, though, so let me do that real quick. This machine does have quite a long, long stitch. So is it that's still the same where one is mm -hmm. oh, on this one? It is. One is quite short. In fact, you can go almost in place. Yeah. That's that just like that one looks like a quarter inch long. Or so here we've got, yeah, just about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit longer than the one we saw on the straight stitch. Mm -hmm. This is going to be way better for leather. Not necessarily all the way this long, but pretty close. Just because the fewer punctures you have in leather, the stronger it's going to stay. Mm -hmm. Was this number nine or number one? This was number nine. Okay. Yeah. So let's go back down the other direction. I'm not going to take it all the way to zero because literally you just you destroy the thread because you're stitching so close to over it. So we're at uh, maybe about two inch here. And I think that's enough to demonstrate that. <laughs> ah, stay. Oh yeah. Oh. And you can get smaller than that if you need it. I'm not sure why you would ever need smaller than that, but it's there if you need it. Alright, so there's that. Um, any other features I've missed? Nope, I think that's it. Uh, any questions before we jump into the project? Nope. Okay. It's going to be a variant on the it's mostly a hands-on practice, so anybody who wants to stick around and do it, go for it. Um, if you're feeling good, you're welcome to it today.